Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is both one of the least and most harmful radiations that you can actually be exposed to. To explain this, alpha radiation has a very short distance that it can penetrate in the open air. This is because it is very positively charged and all of the air around you has some negative charge to it which attracts the alpha particles as they are emitted from a source such as this polonium-210. As a result, they lose energy and slow down quickly. It is sort of like firing a gun into the woods. As the bullet passes by the trees, it hits branches and very quickly slows down to a stop, stopping much quicker than it would in an open field. Alpha radiation is not particularly dangerous on the outside, like this, for example. You'll notice that even the Geiger counter doesn't detect it. And the Geiger counter isn't going to detect it, even though this is a significant amount, because it can't even make it past the foam and the plastic. But if this were to get inside of your body, where it could come very close to your cells, it is considered 20 times more deadly than gamma of an equivalent amount. And so it is both reasonably harmless and extraordinarily deadly at the same time. It very much depends on how you interact with alpha particles. Now, this is a standard Geiger counter. Unlike some Geiger counters, this one has an open window in the front of it. You'll notice that there's a, a piece of metal over the screen that's to prevent me from poking this incredibly thin fragile window underneath. This window is so thin that it allows alpha particles to enter the Geiger tube when they normally couldn't. They can't make it through the back or the sides. And only Geiger counters that have a window like this can view alpha particles. There are smaller windows too and smaller Geiger counters. Let's demonstrate the stopping power of the alpha particle. For this, we're going to take polonium-210. This was made famous as this is the isotope that was used to kill a famous Russian person, Litvanenko, I believe was his last name. Of course, this is thousands and thousands, if not millions of times less. This is a legal quantity that you're allowed to own. In fact, you, can, may, you may not actually own any source of this that is greater than this in the United States without a license, even though I consider it to be a small amount. So let's flip it over. The polonium-210 is attached, chemically bonded to the silver coating in the back. As you can see, we don't really detect anything. Only when we get within a couple of inches can we start to detect something, and then suddenly we'll detect a whole bunch. Let's move the probe closer. We're now about to three inches, two inches, one inch, and there it is. you'll notice that the, the counter is wildly moving around. The reason is because the tiniest little fluctuations in the distance of the probe to the source from my hand moving the tiniest bit are adjusting them that much. That is how difficult it is to sense the alpha particles. Most interestingly, with just a simple piece of paper, we can block them. Take this $100 billion note from, uh, let's see, the National Bank of um, Zimbabwe. By the way, this is enough to buy a loaf of bread, so nobody come rob me. Observe. We can put this detector over the source and move the paper in and stop it. Move the paper out, move the paper in. Now, it is important to understand how alpha particles behave when you interact with them in, in, in the real world. Alpha particles are basically the, the nucleus of helium. Now, it's not because they are helium. It's because two protons and two neutrons are incredibly stable. 
incredibly stable from a quantum mechanics standpoint. And when they're ejected from an atom, which I'll explain in a moment why that happens, they fly off with incredible energy. And that energy is enough to bombard other atoms, breaking them apart, knocking pieces off of them, knocking electrons off of them, for example, or even combining with them. And this causes ionization, which is why alpha particles are so deadly. Once they lose their energy and slow down, they will generally pick up electrons and become completely harmless helium. It is important to understand that you cannot get alpha particles on you. You cannot become contaminated with alpha particles. You may become contaminated with alpha particle emitters. Dust from uranium that is emitting alpha particles can become contamination on your hands. But the alpha particles themselves, for example, if the alpha particles are hitting my finger right this moment, and they're not even making it past my skin, um, they are not sticking to me. My finger will not become radioactive as a result of it. Another important thing to consider are the type of Geiger counters that can detect alpha particles. For example, take this civil defense Geiger counter. This is a CDV 700. An absolutely lovely Geiger counter. Let's cut on the sound. And this Geiger counter is fully functional. Put it against the check source. On times 10, we can see that it's even calibrated. Oops. But, putting it back to times 1 again, we have 0 to 100 to 300, sorry, 0 to 100 to 200 to 300 counts per minute. We will notice that the, these alpha particles here don't do much, even with the beta window open. It can't detect them. Now, let's understand where alpha particles come from. Alpha decay is one of the two types of decays which are normally found in atoms, alpha and beta decay. Alpha decay occurs when a portion of the atom's nucleus is ejected at a high rate of speed. The reason for this ejection is that there are two forces inside of the nucleus that are at odds. On the one hand, you have protons which are positively charged, which repel one another in the same way that two components of a magnet will actually repel one another, the north and the north versus the south and the south, as opposed to attracting. So the protons wish to break away from one another and would, but they are held tightly together from another force called the strong nuclear force. There's an energy between them that they share called the quantum, uh, quantum chromodynamic binding energy. Anyhow, this quantum chromodynamic binding energy is very, very strong and typically is capable of withstanding the tremendous force the protons have trying to force one another apart. But sometimes when atoms are just a little bit too big in the inside, when there's just a few too many nucleons, such as heavier elements like uranium or plutonium, the protons can have enough force, just enough, to get past this quantum chromodynamic binding energy. Through a method called quantum tunneling, it is actually possible for fragments of the nucleus to escape the nucleus. They jump right out of the nucleus. Now, alpha particles are two protons and two neutrons. And the reason for this is because two protons and two neutrons are incredibly stable from a quantum mechanical standpoint. That's why they're ejected. Technically, other types of ejections are perfectly possible and occur, but the common one is alpha decay. Uranium, thorium, and other common elements emit alpha particles and can be readily detected. For example, this piece of Schwakingrite comes from Hideout Mine in San Juan County, Utah. You could literally walk up and pick this up off the ground. With the detectors back against the uranium, we can only detect beta and gamma and x-rays. We will not detect alpha particles. And as you can see, there is plenty making it through to the detector, mostly gamma. All of the alpha 
and the majority of the data are blocked. Turning this around, we see how strong alpha and to its own credit beta are. If the uranium sample were removed, we could demonstrate the same effect on common granite countertop tile. This is a piece of a granite countertop, the type you might buy for your house. It is also an alpha emitter. Not a very strong one, but there they are. Remember, to detect alpha radiation, you have to have a th or end window tube like this. You cannot use a probe that is sealed like the CDV700's probe. Number two, you must be incredibly close to detect alpha radiation. The tiniest distance away, and you can no longer detect it. The simplest way to determine if you're detecting alpha radiation is to put a piece of thick paper in between the sample and the detector. If the reading drops, then you're almost assuredly detecting some alpha radiation. Remember, folks, always be careful. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye.